Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Hello, back. welcome back everyone. We are here live on theCUBE, exclusive pre-game coverage of the afternoon keynote with Larry Ellison and Vishal Saka. The uh, CUBE is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and my co-host Brian Gracely from the Silicon Angle Media Research Team at wikibond.com. Uh, Brian, keynote's coming up. I'm expecting a deeper dive by Larry Ellison. Certainly, he had the day zero or day one for us on Sunday. We did the keynote there and saw him really lay out right out of the gate. Here's the new competition. Here's how we're doing things. We've got cloud across the board. So I'm expecting a little bit deeper dive uh, from Larry uh, Ellison. What are you expecting? Yeah, well this morning's keynote, we saw a little bit on the, the new IaaS, infrastructure as a service offerings. I think today, especially with, with the partner, with Infosys being the partner, he's going to deep dive into how do I expand SaaS applications. I'm really hoping he shows us how do you migrate applications to the cloud. That to me is, is a big deal. Let customers understand how complicated or simple that is. And Vishal Sikha, the CEO of Infosys, former SAP, really a pioneer in the web services space. I remember talking to uh, Vishal back in 2001 time frame and then going through the early dec part of the decade, you know, web services and APIs was a foreign concept. And you know, he was really a believer in the API economy. Uh, so was Amazon at that time. So obviously Amazon is, is what they become, Amazon Web Services. So I want to hear the story around developers. I want to hear about the new normal, the new API economy. I want to hear about how big data and applications are being built. And I want to hear it, not just for Oracle, I want to hear it beyond Oracle. I want to hear about the developers, what's happening for developers. If I want to build an HR app that's a very unique use case, can I do that with HCM? We heard Chris tell us that they could. So, I want to hear some real high-powered game today from Larry Ellison. Yeah, no, I agree. I, you know, this is a what I would call a suit and tie show. We're a lot of cases we're going to the hoodie shows, the t-shirt shows. How are they going to attract those folks? Those folks are open source. Those folks, you know, they want to they want to work on multiple clouds at whatever pace they want. It's going to be interesting. Can they attract them? Or more importantly, you know, can I attract enterprise customers to want to change their business? Let's talk about that dynamic because the hoodie crowd versus the suit crowd. Oracle wants to go and win cloud. They got to win the developers yeah. on the enterprise and in mainstream. How do you win developers? In my and my take on this is that developers care about, leave me alone, let me pick the tools that I want to use, get me distribution and help me make some money or be successful with my app. At the end of the day, all dogma aside, that's the core. Right, absolutely. So yeah, no, they, they want to make money, they want to be in business for themselves. There were some things in the announcement this morning though that concerned me a little bit. I mean, they were talking about doing billing monthly, they are doing DevOps but pushing once a month. Uh, you, you tell that to most hoodie developers and they would go, that was great, Thanks, thank you grandpa for telling me about 2008. So I think they've got to step up their game and their capabilities. Right now it's a nice cloud offering for slower moving enterprise applications, but the ones that need to iterate fast, I'm not sure, we'll see how that evolves. Uh, so the main message here at Oracle, open world is the cloud, integrated cloud, cloud, applications and platform services. Yep. Brian, I want to get your take on this. This is something that we've been talking about before this show and all the shows, but specifically around Oracle is that the DevOps movement really has built the ethos of what the cloud is. And the, the primary term we use is infrastructure as code. Yep. Basically what that means is, hey, I'm a developer, give me what I need and get out of my way. I want to provision stuff fast on my application. Oracle seems to be positioned super well yep. for infrastructure as code. They got the M7s, they got the super clusters, they got under the hood engineering systems. Now they got integration in the cloud. Do you think that will be a game changer for them? Do you think they have infrastructure as code? And if not, what do they need to do to get there? Well, the question to me, and, and, and again, we've been really impressed with all the M7 stuff, the Spark stuff and everything, is do developers have to now think about hardware? Because we've gone through this age of uh, things are getting abstracted, uh, you know, I don't have to think about hardware, I don't want to think about hardware. Do I have to start thinking about that? Do I have to be knowledgeable about it? Uh, that'll be an interesting dynamic to watch. And then, like you said, infrastructure as code is all about moving fast, it's all about things being in software. It's going to be interesting to watch that dynamic as to how fast can they help customers go. So we heard this morning and throughout the day, multi-tenants big in the cloud, in-memory databases, integration, and database intelligence. Is the data going to be a big part of this new normal for Oracle? Obviously identity, federation, these are terms that have been kicked around. 
your thoughts on the data as a service and the notion of their multi-tenancy. Right, well, so Wikibon's David Floyer, our CTO, talks all the time, data's heavy, right? The challenge of moving applications to the cloud is, is how do you move the data? What's going to be really interesting, and we've heard him talk about data services, how many data services is Oracle going to originate? How much can I get weather data, census data, ongoing streaming data? Because if I can get that out of the cloud natively, I'm more driven to want to put my applications natively in the cloud, use those native cloud uh, data services. What do you think about app builders, app builders, the oh, tools that they have? What do you think about some of the, the technology technology they have around making it easier for the developer. Do you think that they have a good UX strategy? What are some of your thoughts there? Obviously they're talking about user experience. Larry mentioned that on Sunday. What do you think about their overall positioning for these new app developers? Well, let's put it in perspective. If we look at Amazon's cloud, you know, the patterns that we've seen from them over the last year and a half is start with raw technology, get feedback on it, and make it simpler. Because people don't want to have to think about all the complexities. If Oracle's starting from that position, they're starting with make it simple, make it easy, make it easy to integrate between those things, that's a huge advantage for them, and that, that's a key to them being successful. You know, one of the themes that we've been hearing for the folks out there uh, here on theCUBE at this event is within all the, the messaging and all that stuff that Oracle's doing, but from the customers and from the, all the hallway conversation is, I hear two themes, I want to get your thoughts on it. I want more and go faster. Now that's different from a, an event when you hear things like, can you explain that to me? Um, what does that mean for me? Much more questioning, more challenging. You have a commit mindset from customers here that generally that Larry is right, the wave is here, client server is over, the new era is upon us, integrated cloud, and Oracle has product. Right. So more and go faster. Your thoughts on those two keywords? Well, I think the key thing that I've gotten out of the, all the Oracle analysis this week is Oracle as a vendor is committed to the cloud. And, and for a lot of companies, they're not 100% committed, you know, vendors aren't committed, and that's going to drive how comfortable your customers feel. When your customers feel like, hey, they're going to let me get there, they're going to help me get there, that's going to be a big impetus, because change is hard, but if they feel like the people who are supporting them are doing it, that, that's a huge, huge piece. So the app, on top of the platforms, we were saying in theCUBE earlier that there will be a tsunami of ISVs, a tsunami of an application market that's going to emerge. In the client server era, there was. Right. You saw companies be built. Now, it's a little different. It's more horizontal platform for Oracle, and these new apps, although Oracle has ERP, CRM, and HCM in the cloud, there's a lot of other opportunities for, C, uh, for ISVs, sure. and potentially for smaller startups to get a good beachhead and white space. Your thoughts on that? Well, like, like we've seen, VCs don't invest in hardware anymore. They invest in companies that are going to build in the cloud. I think we're going to start to see more and more of these customers, more and more little kids coming out of college going, look, I need a job. I'm going to work around a place that's going to drive revenue. That's, that's a space they've got to go after. You know, the big SIs will have their business. We'll see if they can go fast. I think we're going to see a huge number of IS, you know, smaller ISDs want to start to play in this space, especially around IoT. And, the, and you know, we talk about changing behaviors, millennial behavior those types of things. Our Oracle has to be considered in the top three, no doubt in my mind on cloud. That's my clear walk away from the show, and I kind of considered them already. But looking at the data, anyone who doesn't put them in the top three um, is really not doing their homework. Uh, Larry Ellison's going to get up on stage, obviously with Vishal Sika, who's a you know, guru technologist. Um, I expect to hear more APIs. But I think it's the meat of the bone. I mean, Larry lays out the early stuff on, on Sunday, kind of sets the stage for the mood, right. Right? right? And then checks off the boxes, gets stuff out there for the announcements. But front end, he clearly saw the new competitors kind of talked about IBM SAP as the old competitors. I think today we're going to see more meat on the bone. Yeah. What's your thoughts and, and relative to that whole keynote? No, I, I hope so. I mean, given the buildup, there's an opportunity for killer demos. You know, show me how to migrate applications, show me how to extend an application, show me how I'm going to build an application that's open. We've been talking about open all week, we've been talking about secure all week. Show me how that happens. Huge opportunity for them to sort of nail that down. Yeah, and I think one of the things I want to see in the demos that I expect to see is speed, yeah. agile, rapid provisioning. <laughs> I'm expecting to see Larry push a few buttons and saying, oh look, I just pushed HCM to the cloud. Yeah. Versus months of porting. Yeah, I, I, I don't want my cloud <laughs> to be a two year integration project. Don't show me that. Yeah, show it to me in two minutes. <laughs> All right, we have two minutes left. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. We're breaking it down. The Cube is powered by SiliconANGLE Media, which is the Wikibon research team at wikibon.com, siliconangle.tv, where we have our, our Cube show, our, our, our flagship event of siliconangle.com, our publishing, and of course, our CrowdChat engagement application. Check out crowdchat.net slash OOW15, and all the content from, from our three and a half days of coverage Coverage, and all the trending conversations from the crowd that we're monitoring and capturing will be seen on crowdpages.co slash OOW15. 
and go to wikibon.com. Stu Miniman had, had a research piece. We have a couple, a couple seconds left here on the end of storage as we know it. Yep. Turns out he wrote that post and then all of a sudden on the keynote with the cloud, it is kind of end of the storage, but Exadata is still under the hood. What's your thoughts? Well, I, I, we get tremendous access to vendors. I think we have a pretty good perspective on what's going on in the market. Yeah, it's, it's, it's happening fast. The cost of storage is coming down. When the cost comes down, people want to use more of it. They got to use it in the cloud because it scales better there. EMC is acquired by Dell, basically going private. I call it a reverse merger, but still it's going to take nine months to complete. Michael Dell's got his hands full, $67 billion. That's a watershed moment for the industry, and I think highlights the fact that Oracle's pumping on all cylinders while everybody else is basically trying to retool. Thoughts real quick. HP's struggling, EMC's got to figure out who they're going to be, Cisco's got a new leader. Lots of opportunity for Oracle to go really take a lot of market share. Is Amazon Web Services punching up to Oracle? I think they're punching in their own direction, but they're punching real hard. They're punching real hard, okay. We're going to go to the keynote now, live for Larry Ellison and Vishal Sikha. This is theCUBE, pre-game coverage, as we call it, pre-commentary of the keynotes. Thanks for watching, and again, go to siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv, go to wikibon.com, crowdchat.net slash OOW15, that's our engagement container, and go to crowdpages.co slash OOW15, that's our new social media, social cloud page, all of our content's going on that page, and we'll be right back with more from Howard Street now, back to the keynote, this is theCUBE. Thank you.